If you're looking for a pitcher who lives and breathes the kind of things covered on this channel, look no further than to Trevor Bauer. The Indian starter spends his off-seasons training in driveline and is well known for becoming an elite pitcher because of his ability to successfully implement advanced training tools. This year, Bauer is off to a red-hot start, throwing 14 innings over two games, striking out 17 while only allowing one hit. In today's video, we will be taking a look at Bauer's arsenal, specifically through the lens of spin axis. So stick around to the end of the video to see my analysis of Trevor's spin axis. But before we can get into that, we first need to define what we're looking at. Spin axis is the measure of how the ball is spinning, measured in degrees or as time on a clock. It's also referred to as spin direction or tilt. I personally prefer spin direction because it's the best description of what this metric is actually measuring. When you're looking at spin axis, you can choose to look at one of two things, degrees or time. In the end, this really comes down to personal preference. I believe that it's easier to understand if you're looking at it as time on a clock. Now let's talk about the baseball itself. When most people think of the axis of some sort of spinning sphere, it's easy to think of the points in which the ball is spinning around, like the north and south poles of the earth. This is not what is being measured by spin axis. What is actually being measured is the direction the ball is spinning from. So if you look at a four seam fastball with pure backspin, which has the top of the ball moving back towards the pitcher and the bottom part of the ball spinning towards the batter, this metric would read as a pitch with a 12 o'clock spin axis and 180 degrees of tilt. Now if we flip the direction the pitch is spinning and throw a pitch with pure top spin, this would read as a perfect 12-6 curveball with 6 o'clock spin axis and 0 degrees of tilt. An important last thing to note about spin axis is when you see a reading with any minutes, that's simply saying that it is between two hour marks. So 1.30 is just the halfway point between a 1 o'clock spin axis and a 2 o'clock spin axis. Now I understand this may be a complicated idea to grasp. So let's look at some edutronic footage to help fully explain this topic. If we freeze the video right at release, you can see that this pitch is spinning back towards the pitcher from the top of the ball. And if we overlay our clock, you can see that this pitch has a spin axis of about 1230. Hopefully this example helped shed a light on what spin axis really looks like. So now let's take a step forward and start looking at the average spin axis for different pitch types. The average four seam fastball has a spin axis of about one o'clock, meaning that there's pure backspin coming from that point. The slight change from 12 o'clock gives you that natural arm side run that almost every single pitcher had. If you shift the spin axis up to 12 o'clock, that pitch is starting to look more like a cutter. Then if you switch the spin axis down to two o'clock, you'll see even more run on that ball and it may appear to sink more than the average fastball. This labels it as a sinker. Most changeups appear in the three o'clock range. The six o'clock range, like we said earlier, is your 12-6 curveball. And if you look at a nine o'clock pitch, you're looking at a frisbee slider that has a lot of horizontal movement. This should give you a general idea of what an average pitcher's arsenal might look like. If you wanna see how these values compare to a left-handed pitcher, all you have to do is mirror these values. Your fastball would come in at about 11 o'clock, Cutter is still in the noon to one range, your sinker is at 10 o'clock, changeup at nine, curveball at six, and slider at three. Finally, let's take a look into Bauer's arsenal. Recently, I was scrolling through Instagram and I stumbled upon this great animation of Bauer's pitches posted by Driveline Baseball. If you don't follow them and you're interested in learning more about the direction baseball is heading, they are leading the pack on this change. So give them a follow. There's a ton of great information there. This screenshot from the post in particular allows us to really get a good look at each of Bauer's pitches. Now, these are all just my estimations, but they should be pretty close to his actual numbers. By placing our clocks back over these pitches, you can see that his fastball has about a 130 spin axis, meaning it is going to have a good amount of run. His cutter has something we haven't covered yet on this channel called gyro spin. I'll do another video on this later, but for now we can estimate the spin axis on this pitch is to be around 1030. His slider 
is a true frisbee coming in at around 9 o'clock. His new changeup has a spin axis of about 245. And his curveball looks more like an 11-5 slurve with a spin axis of 7 o'clock. Really, this just paints half of the picture of how Bauer's pitches move, but it does give us a really good idea of why they move the way they do. In next week's video, we will continue to look into Bauer's arsenal by taking a step forward and examining exactly how these pitches move and why using the concepts described in today's video. So if you have any questions about this topic, leave a comment down below. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, click the video on screen now if you'd like to see more of my comment, then subscribe if you'd like to see more weekly baseball animations.